That's why the aliens don't do not arrive here. <laughs> <laughs> they only cross with the We're spaceships. <laughs> yeah. They look what? No, oh, man. thank you. Send them society. Welcome to the pod. Welcome to two Hasids in a pod. We're extremely, extremely very excited. Very excited, yeah. Came all the way to Jerusalem. We have a very special guest here, all the way nice. from Brazil. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brazil. Um, so we have Eduardo Bolsonaro. Eduardo bon Bolsonaro is, uh, I think, the most voted elected official in Brazil in Congress ever. ever. Yes. And probably one of the youngest. No, you, you have younger guys than me there. But uh, yes, the most voted ever because my father. I'm very humble. All and right, the, your father. Sometimes people try to, you know, to affect me. They say, Eduardo, you, you have this great votation because you're a father. And I say, yes, we are a family and I'm very proud of my father. And uh, yes, if he was doing a shit work, I would be like not that good elected. <laughs> and because, you know, everything uh, I, I, I like to, how can I say that? I like to get left wing, left -wing people angry. <laughs> Do you know how to do that? <laughs> you do? open the door for your wife. You give oh, flowers to your girlfriend. The feminists, like they that. get crazy, you know? <laughs> you say to them, mm, what a nice smell you have, my wife. And the feminists, ah, how can you do that? Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's submission, you know? <laughs> Today's International Women's Day, so it's a... Yes, we're ready to start. <laughs> well, I heard it's not your first time in Israel, right? No, uh, it's my third time here. Wow. The first time that I came here, it was in 2016 with my father and, uh, and brothers. Oh, and then I different. got back here in the end, uh, in the December of 2019. Then my father was president. He wasn't with me. I came here with the committee that I preside. I'm the chairman of the Foreign Affairs and National Defense Committee in the House, né, in Congress in Brazil. And now it's my third time. First time was very nice because, uh, because we had time. No COVID. So yeah, no COVID. <laughs> sure, yes. And uh, so we had the opportunity to go around, to know Jerusalem, to know technology about uh, water, defense. We visited uh, IAI, which uh, is your uh, airplane technology mm -hmm. public company. We we went to Knesset. We talked with the the, the speaker at that time. It was Yuli Elderstein really nice, really nice uh, uh, congressman. And it, we had the opportunity in 2016 to say to him sorry, because Brazil, a couple of months ago, our former president, extreme left wing, Dilma Rousseff, just denied the credentials of Dani Dayan. Dani Dayan was indicated by Benjamin Netanyahu to be ambassador in Brazil. And for no reason, I mean, our former president, Dilma Rousseff, she said that is because he was living in an occupied territory in, in, in Cisjordania. So that's, it was aggression against the Palestinian people, so she refused that. Anyway, Danny Dayan went to the United States and uh, we stayed for more than one year and a half without Israeli ambassador in Brazil, which was a shame for us. But thanks God, now we are in a total different way and that's why we are here. We are here looking forward to have some kind of medicines to bring back to Brazil to fight against the COVID. And if this is happening, it's because we are in a really different moment. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Uh, I think it's really impressive that, you know, Brazil is coming to Israel for, for solutions. And um, mm. I just wanted to ask you a, a question. You know, the Jews were taken out of Israel 2000 years ago and the destruction of the temple. And for 2,000 years, we weren't home. There was always a little bit of Jews here, but we weren't home. And now we're back, and we're back big, right? 70 yeah. years, thank God, it's a very powerful country for the size. And you know there is an important Brazilian in this history. Who? Tell us. Osvaldo Aranha. Ah, yeah. yeah the, foreign, <laughs> the foreign minister just said he, uh, he was Osvaldo Aranha. Can I? Uh, Who is we have time, huh? Yeah, go, go. Yeah, All please, right, please right, explain. Deep. I really admire Osvaldo Ryan. He's a Brazilian, and uh, I'll tell his, his story before the creation of Israel. He was a uh, chancellor uh, of Brazil, and before that, he was the Brazilian ambassador in the US. During the 30s in Brazil, we had tough times because our president at that time, which was a dictatorship, he was in love with Hitler. 
Oh, no. <laughs> At that time, there was a thinking that maybe the best system would be a system where an uh, elite, few people decide for everybody. It, uh, it's, it was seducing, you know, the government in Brazil at that time. And Osvaldo Aranha, or he's on the other way. He was fighting for the freedom. And he was very close of this dictatorship. And he was trying to say, no, Nazism is not that good, fascism is not good, you have US, US, you have a democracy, and so, okay, I'm going to send you to US. And before he arrived in US, do you know what Osvaldo Aranha made? He went to Italy, to know uh, fascism, and Mussolini, then yeah. German, to know the Nazism. And then when he arrives in the United States, he starts to write letters to our president. His name is Getulio Vargas, the dictatorship, saying how good is the system, how things work in the US. People preserve the freedom, the liberty, and is a very healthy, with nice quality life society. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, when he came back to Brazil, he turned himself a uh, chancellor, and then, after all of that, during the 40s, he was the, the Brazilian diplomat who was chairman of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And they were discussing about the creation of Israel, you know, mm -hmm. a territory for those who were under persecution of the Nazism. You know the history better than me. But the thing is, in the beginning, Israel would never have his ter has he its territory. So what was Valdorea made? He suspended the session and went country by country to convince them to create the state of Israel. Wow. So when he had sure, after two days or three days, he got back the session and then start with the votation. Like, country A, how do you vote? And yes, country so B, how do you vote? So he was actually the... Yeah. He's the, he wasn't just a voter. No, he no, made sure. organizer. Yes. Wow. He worked behind the scenes for the creation. It was 47. And then 48, you have the Declaration for Independence, the war, and all that. All Do you know why? What, what motivates a person like that to, to seek for a home for Israel? He is a freedom lover, for sure, for sure. And uh, like maybe because he saw the dictatorship in Brazil, think that this is nothing nothing good. He knows about the Nazism, about the persecution for sure. So maybe, you know, it's a kind heart. And uh, maybe after so much suffering, you people deserve not a new land, but go back to your land. This is very nice what you told Elio, because uh, in some countries as Brazil, they don't teach us all the, story, all the history. And then people start to think that this is a, a new thing, a new place for the Jewish. And no, no, no. You forgot about 2,000 years before. I know that you have a lot of kind of dispute, but uh, you have to show all the facts about the history. I mean, if you, if you dig in the ground in Israel, mm -hmm. the only thing you find is Jewish artifacts. Yes, there are other nations that are after, but if you go way back, the temple, the coins, the menorahs, the bones are next to the temple. It's Jewish things. I know there is something that you don't have here. What? Oil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the, the food, unique place. <laughs> in the food, we have a lot of oil. We have falafel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you like yeah. the food here? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> like, I, I'm not a, a reference because I eat everything, <laughs> but I like the food here, for sure. Mm. For sure, I enjoy. Well, here, actually, we uh, are mandatory to uh, go to the army. We, we ourselves, we went to the army. Uh -huh. I was in special forces. He was cutting potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that I would like to know. I know that here you have a kind of, uh, of a debate about uh, some kind of religion. I'm not sure if it's orthodox that uh, they say that you don't have to go to the army. You have something like that, huh? So, y yeah, yeah, you want to explain? Yeah, so um, what, I'll go back to the history of it, right? So when the state was made, it was right after the Holocaust. And a lot of Jewish tradition, religious tradition, was completely annihilated and erased during the Holocaust. And we didn't have our teachers, we didn't have our schools, all of that was left in Europe, and now you bring all the Jews to Israel, and you have to start again. So there was, from the, the secular Jews made the state of Israel, so they established the state, they were the ones that knew how to get into politics and to make everything happen, but the heart of Judaism is the Torah, is the Bible. 
the traditions, the, the, traditions, the religion, everything, and how we, how we lived for 2,000 years up until the state of Israel. So when we came here, the religious people realized how important it was to have an army, but more important than the army, or equally as important as the army, is to support it with prayer and with learning and with what gives us life. So origin- kept us the base, together. the base, yeah. exactly. So, so one of the original rabbis that was here, um, the Chazonish, they call him, he fought very hard against David Ben Gurion to, he kind of pushed his hand and he says, listen, we were just slaughtered. We can't forget our Torah. We can't forget our life, which is the Bible. We're not just uh, any nation. We're the people of the Bible. Like that's what everyone else calls us. So he made a rule. He made the Ben Gurion put a rule in, in, the, in, the, in the law of, of the state of Israel that yes, there's a mandatory draft, but there's a certain amount of students every year that are allowed to stay and they don't draft. They stay learning Torah in order to make sure that we never forget our tradition, that we always alive. have. And classically, if we go back to the times of King David, to the times of Moses, Jewish warriors would always go out two, two at a time. And, and, and one would have all of the weapons and one would be praying the whole entire time. And they would go together. So now it's not the same way in the IDF now, in the, in the army now, but our tradition for always, we had warriors, but it was never just physical because we're not a f- just a physical people. We're deeply, deeply connected to our soul and even more so to our soul than a body. So yes, it's important to have in a military. I got it. But you cannot have a military without having a connection to God constantly. And right? also this is what keeps us united and connected for all these years. We kept our mm-hmm. religion and what kept us That's why we call Close. you Jewish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Nice, thank you. See, this is a two hands podcast. Yeah, it, ha- it, has to be, it, has to, it has to be this way. And in Brazil, you have a mandatory draft? Yeah, yeah. what happened in Brazil is that uh, when you complete 18 years old, you have to go to the army for one year. Oh. But uh, as we don't, uh, we don't have too much resource, and uh, it's a totally different situation from here, from Israel, and uh, usually you have more, uh, you have a few, only few, you, you don't have that much vacancy. So, for example, if you have uh, 100 teenagers completely uh, 18 years old, I would say that you have uh, 15 that want to go to the army, but you only have five places. So, usually, if you don't want to go to the army, you, you ask to that and you don't go. But you need your certification that of reservist. I got that. Yeah, because <laughs> because when when you go and uh, for example, if you you are going to occupy any 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 chair in the in the government, for example, public service, you need to show that with your ID. So it's it's mandatory, but not for the for the women. Okay. For women are like, are uh, they? It's not necessary to go there to serve. You were a lot of the time also in the military. If you're like. Uh, no no no! I no? went to the federal police. Federal it's pretty police? much. Oh. Uh, it's not pretty much the same, but uh, yes, both work with the forces, with guns and weapons. And uh, when I went to the federal police, I was, I, I was graduating in law. So in the beginning I was a lawyer. Then I made the test. It was 55,000 in the whole Brazil. And I was approved, uh, I was the number 132. And when I went to the federal police, uh, our formation is in the capital in Brasilia. So is the, Brasilia stays in the physical center of Brazil. And after that, the first place that I worked, it was in the border with Bolivia, because when you went in the federal police, you can go anywhere in Brazil. You can go to the coast, you can go to the Amazon, you can go to the south. I went to the border with Bolivia, one of the biggest producers of cocaine in the world. <laughs> so you have a lot of activity there. Yeah. And then I went to, Sao Paulo Airport, which it is the number one in the world at that time when you talk about arrest cocaine. But this is because you have the, the three biggest producers of cocaine on the world. They are like Colombia, Venezuela, and Bolivia. So you Colombia, saw a lot Venezuela, of Colombia, Bolivia, and Peru. Peru. Yeah, in Venezuela, is, you have that too for sure. But they were, they used Brazil as first, we have a market, we have a lot of addicted people with money to spend on that, and happily. And it is uh, from the, the airport of Sao Paulo, the parts fly for everywhere. So they use a lot of that. And uh, then in 2014, I asked to be candidate 
a representative of Sao Paulo, and then I got elected with uh, 82,224 votes. The exact number. Term. Yes. <laughs> and then I got re-elected in 2018 with 1,843,735 votes. Wow. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> So the yeah, but at that time in 2018, we had a, a tsunami, a conservative tsunami, yeah. because people was full not only about the, the the corruption, it's also because, for example, these things like a president that with no excuse denied the creation of the Israeli ambassador. We had in Brazil decisions of the president Lula to keep. Uh, a terrorist Italian called Cesare Battisti, who was convicted for murder, for four murders in Italy. He came to Brazil, and our president at that time, Lula, said, no, it's okay, he be here, and he can stand, he can be here in Brazil. And you know why? Because he was killing people in name of the communists. Mm -hmm. He was part of a group called PAC, Proletarian, we, uh, proleta in Portuguese I say Proletarios Armados, Para o comunismo. Yeah, it's yeah. like the communist armed proletarians. Yeah, yeah. And you know, everything, when, when you talk about the Labour Party, left, extreme left wing people, as our former president Lula and then Dilma, you are talking about people that don't care about nothing. They just care about their target, about communism, about power. They don't care about anything else. So uh, if you talk then about uh, values as name, honor, honesty, they, they just don't care about that. This it's is so the left. It's so popular though, it's so popular amongst the youth, especially in universities. I, I see it with friends in, in, in the US, in England, across the world, the younger generation, they think that socialism and communism really is cool. some solution. What yeah. are the dangers? Why, first of all, why do they think that? Why is it so attractive? And what are the dangers if they don't ever get taken out of that, that mindset. First thing, young, young people are the target of the communists, whatever you call, socialists, Marxists, Bolivarians, whatever, because uh, it's easy to, to talk something and they believe. Why? Because they don't have a clear picture of the world. They never paid a bill, any, any kind of bill, gas bill, you know, <laughs> rent of the house, so it's, they, 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 they have a... That way. <laughs> yeah. When you start to pay your own bills, then you say, okay, I'm not going to share my, my salary with no one because yeah. I have to pay my bills. Why am I going to not spend the money, I don't know, buying a car? Because I have to give my money to other people that do not work? You know, yeah. some things try to start to make sense in your, in your mind. So uh, universities are the target, especially because they form all kinds of people. After university, you became a doctor, you became a lawyer, you became a politician, mm, syndicalist, so you know, you, you go everywhere. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, in Brazil, I go back a little bit. Do you know uh, uh, a person, Italian, called Antonio Gramsci? Have you ever listened about him? No. No? All right. You know Karl Marx for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, after Karl Marx make uh, the book The Capital, the communism manifest together with Engels. What happened in the world? You see, in 1917, the Russian Revolution. In 49, Chinese Revolution. In 59, you have the Cuban Revolution, Cuban island, but it's okay. Antonio Gramsci, what he said, he said that is, you can take the power by force in countries where you have strong leaders, mm -hmm. but in democracies, with strong institutions, people are, are not ready, you know, to start with, to, to, with the communism. They are not going to be good at that. You, you are going to face a lot of resistance. So Gramsci says that it's necessary you do a cultural revolution before get the power. Mm. So their books were translated to Portuguese during the 60s. And in 1964, the communism, the communists, they tried to do the same in Brazil that happened in the Soviet Union. Soviet Union was the big example. You get the guns, you kill the czar, you kill the king, you kill the president, and then you get the power. This was the... Simple. Yeah, it was the example of communism, how to take the power. But in Brazil, 
they tried they, uh, with a lot of conspira conspiracy, but... Fake news. Yes, a lot, a lot. So, but uh, but uh, our militaries at that time, they fight back and got the power before the communism, communists. Okay, I'm really shortly in the... Yeah. This is a resume of the history, all right? So, from 1964 until 85, we had presidents that were general from the army in Brazil. And at that time, the left wings, they do the Caesar strategy. In your hand, they were kidnapping ambassadors as they kidnapped the ambassador of US, the ambassador of Japan, kidnapping four airplanes, went to Cuba, killing some militaries, killing some police. And on the other hand, you had other guys following what Antonio Gramsci was saying. Like, year after year, decade after decade, you go into the university and you start a doctrination mm. on the head of the people, on the head of the students. Yes. And then you have, uh, you come nowadays after more than 40 years with this kind of routine, then you have the universities. If you wear a, a t-shirt with the face of my father, Jay Bolsonaro, and you go to university, depending for what university you are going, you are really going to have a fight. You have videos on YouTube. People, how do you say in English when someone is... Spit. Spit. Oh, people wow. spit. Yes, only because of that. They are, they are crazy. They are really intolerant. It's the same thing with Trump. Yes, yes, yes. The same thing. The same thing. And see how they organize it. What happened in Brazil happened in the U.S. And no doubt that can happen here in Israel. They, they are very well organized in a global level. And we conservatives, now we are looking at the facts of this. And now we are trying to have our contacts and put us in a global level of communication, you know. Your, your experience in the federal police, it seems like it translated into politics because <laughs> you're, you're, so to say, in a war. You're trying to save Brazil from foreign ideas. Yes. In the beginning, when I was in university, I, I, I was used to say that I would never go into politics because it's a, it's a life that you mix, you know, your private life, your public life. Everybody knows your salary. You can be in vacations on a beach and someone take pictures or try to, you know, to talk bad things about you. But then in 2010, my father, he tried, he asked to be the president of the, of the Human Rights Committee of the House in the Congress. And then they, they got, it was exactly at that moment that the politically correct, you mm. know, was like fully increased. And then people started saying, oh, you are racist. They created a new, a new word called homophobic. You are homophobic. You are xenophobic. You don't like women. You don't like poor. You don't like black. You don't like foreigners. Man, you, I don't know whom I like, who my father like. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that, my father even makes a joke. Man, man, come on, come on. I don't like gays and I don't like women. What I like so? <laughs> <laughs> how, how I have kids? <laughs> how did you born? <laughs> But uh, yes, and then I asked my father, see, but father, do you mind if you support me in an election in Sao Paulo? Because I was serving in Sao Paulo as a federal policeman. And I said, no, 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 it's okay, try to do that. And we spent 10 or $20,000 and I got elected, which is a very low money for, for Brazil when you talk about elections, because you have candidates that spend millions and millions of dollars in a campaign to be representative. And uh, I got lucky, I got elected in 2014, and then re-elected in 2018. And uh, I'm enjoying the life. I mean, I, I, I feel useful, so I have satisfaction in what I do. Do you have time, free time, time to enjoy your life? Uh, yeah, 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 you have, you have, you have, like, uh, but you have to separate. Yeah. If you don't block your agenda, something is going to be, you know, ask for meetings, trips, <laughs> travels, but uh, yes, it's, I usually say that uh, everybody who works is a, is a hard work in life. You, you can't compare your work with other people's works. You, each, each work you have your special stress. But uh, as I was talking, like, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy my life. Like, you, you get old faster, yeah. no hair, but, uh, but you feel that you are doing something bigger. Like, uh, my father, he got stabbed during the election. Like, mm. can you imagine, like, 
if it was only for the money or only for the I don't know to appear in the pictures in newspaper, you know. You stop. I right think there. yes. You <laughs> stop. You stop immediately if because you it's stop. too much headache. Too much headache. Wow, that must have been so intense. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine. But uh, on a good note, I heard that you just became a father, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov, <laughs> like Mazel we say. Toda rava. I'm actually. My wife is due also, actually now, very She was soon. due two days ago. Oh, two days ago. <laughs> two days ago? But she's, didn't she's, not, she's still pregnant. She's, she didn't give birth yet, so oh, right, I'm right. about to be a dad. All right. Do you have any advice for me? <laughs> <laughs> Sleep well, enjoy. That's what I My advice is I'm very easygoing. Sometimes people, oh, be careful because maybe it's going to be, you know, stomach problem, fever. Like, yeah. Just don't care. Everybody, everybody cross this phase. Like, and uh, when the baby born, you become a father. This is naturally, and you are going to know how to how to handle the situation. It's it's not a big deal. No. It's much more <laughs> big deal for the for the women. <laughs> <laughs> it's your first baby. My first baby. Uh, Her name is Georgia, and Georgia. people make jokes with me because Eduardo, this is a bad look because in the state of Georgia, Trump lost. Uh, <laughs> but you win it back now. Uh, are you going to change the name of your daughter to Florida? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, exactly. if it was a boy, the name would be Isaac. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Why? Why? That's a very Jewish name. <laughs> my, uh, I agreed, but it was uh, my my wife with uh, like A S A A C. And uh, I, I like the name, but she has all the meanings and everything and uh, the connection it's about the religion. In Hebrew is to laugh. Uh -huh. Because when right, Sarah and Abraham, they were 90 years old. Abraham was 99 and Sarah was 90. And the angel comes and tells them, God is going to give you a baby next year. And mm -hmm. Sarah starts to laugh. <laughs> and, so, and God tells him, and you're going to call the baby laughter. It's so, so did you pick your uh, daughter's name or did you uh, did your wife? No, it's still Georgia. <laughs> But did your wife pick the huh? name? Did your wife pick the name or did you pick the name? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we, we agreed like uh, she no you. complaints. <laughs> She ruled the house. I, I just say yes. <laughs> yes, mom. That's smart. There's more advice. <laughs> yeah. so, Stay alive. That's what we got to do. <laughs> uh -huh. But I'm very happy with the situation. It's very nice. When oh, you come sure. back home and have the baby, you know, smiling, yeah. it's really nice. You're probably FaceTiming now. Uh, yes, yes. Just uh -huh. to see you. Uh -huh. Are you... Um, Are you thinking of making any uh, presidential run yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody ask me about it in Brazil. Uh, this is something that I don't, I don't want for me. Like if you look uh, personally. You said that about politics though. Yes. Like uh, it's hard to say something about that, but uh, this is something if, if I would, uh, if I could decide, the, I would say no. This is not the life that I want because looking to my father's life, man, this is like every day when you wake up, you have a bomb to disarm. It's very stressful, but uh, if the conditions turn to me and say like, you, we only have you, you have the conditions, that I would say yes, okay, I go. But it's nothing, something that, uh, you know, I'm looking forward, like I have to be the president, I'm going to work around, I start to do interviews and talk this, this and that targeting you know looking to be president no 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 this is nothing that it's that good though because you when you were from the federal police you see a, an opportunity to make a change in politics i think from what you said that's really what you were feeling like i want to make a change to support my father nowadays i see how important this is my position so i enjoy my position to try to do my best you know fighting for the freedom keep the jewish christian world as it is like i mean the western hemisphere Sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 it's, uh, it's all good. We're flowing. Don't worry. <laughs> we're, we're not holding anything, uh, anything, nothing serious here. We're just talking. It's important messages, uh -huh. but uh, we're flowing. What's your impression of Israel? So The best possible. Wow. Israel, uh, since I came here in 2016, I got in love. And usually, uh, I like to surf. This is something that I really love to do. And in the vacations, I go, you know, to Costa Rica, if I have the chance, Hawaii, Indonesia. And, uh, and before coming to Israel, I had no expectation unless the religion, the religion tourism. 
But after you see so many technology, people open it, diversity, everything. You, you have everything here in a desert. How you have nothing and look for what Israel is and look to Brazil, we have so many you know, sources for water, trees, biggest forests of the world, the rich coast and everything. And we are still third world with a lot of poverty. So Israel became to me inspiration. I like to come here to talk with people from Israel and uh, you have a lot of respect from me now because the way that you survive here, if you look for the history, and I like to study the history, so much enemies around, Nowadays, things are changing a little bit. Yeah. You have a big enemies still, but things are changing a little bit to a better, to a better situation. But anyway, like the way that, that you fight and you keep this territory with your people, if you go here to the wall of the lamentation. Uh, Western wall. We West call it the Kotel. The Kotel. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Kotel, you, you, you're going to see a lot of young people praying, you know, black suits, maybe with the same hair. And uh, it means that the tradition is saved. It's, it's going to keep on for a long time. And uh, sometimes you look for the other countries and young people only want to have sex and enjoy the life. They think pleasure is everything that you need to be happy, you know? So this is a, it can sound cliche, but this is an empty life. Yeah. Yeah. Because- We all tried it. <laughs> after, after, after some age, you are not going to have sex anymore. So what, what you're going to have? You know, still going to the parties with 60, 70, 80? What stories are you going to tell to your kids if you are going to have kids, you know? Yeah, if you have kids. Man, this is, the, the world is like, it's getting, it's getting crazy and empty. My wife, she's a psychologist. And she says that the main occupation of the future is psychologist because wow. they, they tell so much bad things and anti-natural things to the kids, like gender ideology. You are not a woman. You are not a man. You are going to decide when you have 12 years old. I mean, man, how? That's how? what they're doing now in the States. They're letting them choose. Yes, yeah, States, Brazil, Germany. This is crazy, crazy. And uh, I don't know. I, I have other. I'm not. Uh, I, I don't think myself. I'm old school. Sometimes they try to label the conservatives as someone that's, you know. Primitive. Old yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And uh, I really don't think that. We, we only want to reform. We can see good things, you know, in keep your family and do not teach in the schools gender ideology. We want to reform our society. We have an ex a, a, a leader in conservative, the Irish, Edmund Burke, and he said that be conservative is, only, is be always willing for reforms, for changes. And the Marxists, socialists, communists, progressives, what they say is that you have to, you know, to forget about all the history of the humanity and from now on start a new kind new of world. society, new goals, new behaviors. And you don't have space for religion in this new society that any kind of uh, bright engineer draw for us. I want to, drive, to draw my own family. The, my own way of life. And if you have other decisions, it's up to you, not up to me. See what is happening here in pandemia. Pandemia, now we have a bunch of the dictatorships saying that what you have to do, what you don't have to do, because this is for the good of everybody. And come on. Am I going, like, uh, stop to pray because it can be dangerous for the society? Yeah. What, what, what is the fun in life if you, if you can't do what you trust, what you believe, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm giving the example of the prey, but for who is looking at us, watching us on the television or internet, whatever, can be other thing. It's just do what you have to do, respect it, but do not try to control, do not try to rule others' people life because they, <laughs> we don't know what is the other people's lives. It's, a, it's also, it's, also, it's almost as if there's no trust in humans, in the individual human to make the yes. right decision for his yeah. own life. Yeah. Right? We have to be told what to do. You have to, I think there, with that said, on the other hand, they're trying to say, no, a four-year-old can decide if it's a boy or a girl. Yes. Like, yes. so, okay, so I can't uh, decide <laughs> what I spend my money on, 
but a four-year-old can decide to make a drastic surgery to change his own yes. their life. Yeah, yes. Craziness. Crazy world. It's Crazy the, world. That's also the thing with communism and socialism. Socialism, the individuality be goes out of the window. Yes. There's no more no more Everything is collective. Everything yeah. is collective. And uh, I wanted to tap on this idea of social media versus media. You have a huge social media following. Your father m most likely won the election because of social media. Yes. It was I, I, when I was in Brazil last time. I got to go to the to the palace and I was sitting there and I saw some of the team of the social media team and they were explaining to me how they really organically yes. using Twitter and Instagram and Facebook got a message across and that's from the people. And then you have on the other side the establishment of mainstream media that are doing everything to throw dirt on the whole entire Bolsonaro family and administration. Yes. Social media is organic from the people, from the bottom up. The mainstream media and is from we, and the top and, down. And, and we don't pay our posts. Exactly. You know? we, we don't put money in our social media. It's 100% so, organic. So how, how, does, how do you stay sane? How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with, yeah. with, with, with people throwing dirt on your name? All the fake news, all this nonsense. As I say, every time that we wake up, we know that we have a bomb to disarm. Please, don't go in Wikipedia and do a search for my name. You are going to see really bad things that is really fake about me. <laughs> but uh, in Brazil, we have, uh, you have two things. You have the ideological problem and you have the money problem. What is the money problem? It's because the biggest mainstream medias of Brazil, they were used for decades with public money. Mm. And even before the election, my father told, there is a very famous video, and my father uh, is telling for the Global Group. Global Group is the biggest TV and the biggest uh, communication group of Brazil. And he says, Global Group, work. But you have really to hard work against me, against me to be the president, because other way, I will give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you what all the other TV channels receive with no privilege. And he's doing that. So if you go to Brazil and watch global television, man, you're going, really going to think that we are nazis, we are fascists, we are extremists, we are whatever. See, <laughs> I have a bill in the Congress increasing the punishment for nazism and also wow. criminalizing communism. And they say that I am the nazist. Yeah, we just saw in the news uh, and also yesterday the video that you did with uh, the minister here, Gabi yes. Ashkenazi. Like they called your government a Nazi government for making a gas chamber in, in Brazil. The, like, yeah. well, we don't support that at all. It's disgusting. We don't Imagine if you would anything. call the alliances back in the day Nazis for trying to fight the Nazis. It's the same thing now. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. But see, things are so clear to see. Yeah. That in the end of the day, people realize that we are not this monster. And when they go to internet in a space uh, in opportunities like this one that we are having right now, and they see other Eduardo Bolsonaro, they think, man, this doesn't add up. This guy's good. <laughs> I, I, I agree with his opinions. I, I, I think that we, we don't have to give uh, people's money for the taxes to global group. I think we have to put, I don't know, in the health, in education or whatever. And then that's also why my father got elected and I got elected with a such big votation because you have internet. Before internet, you had radio, you had television, and you had the newspaper. This kind of communication is one-hand communication. Mm -hmm. Internet is a two-hand communication. It gives to everybody the opportunity to say what they think. And when the establishment realized that the social engineer that they draw to our society, people do not agree with that. That's it. And how they answer? Vote in Jair Bolsonaro. Yeah. This is, this is what, what happened. You, what do you think of like, Twitter taking Trump yeah. off of this? Like, how does that happen? What is, they how, are, how they, can you do that to a leader of, pretty much the leader of the free world? You, you remove him from, I, I didn't, we were talking about this. Twitter and social media is the street. Right? Once, if you wanted to get a message out, you went to stand in the middle of the plaza uh -huh. and you stood on a box and you, and you spoke to everyone. That's Twitter now. I have a better definition. In Brazil, you have places where live the drug addicted. There is a, a drug that's very cheap, that usually homeless use that, they live on the streets, 
call it the crack. Do yeah. you have crack yeah. here? Not here, thank God, but in America, yeah. Yeah, the, so it. these places receive the name of Cracolandia. It's the land of the crack. Hmm. Twitter is the land of the crack. <laughs> it's the land of the cocaine. You get addicted. You yeah. want to get out from the Twitter, but you can't. You go there <laughs> and keep there feeding the Twitter, you know. <laughs> I think this is the best definition that, uh, that we have for the Twitter. But uh, talking seriously, man, there is... I only saw that the Communist Party in China is very criticized because they control all the media of China. What is the difference between Twitter nowadays from the Communist Party of China? No difference. They both control the communication. They both silent oppositors. This is what is happening. Like, no excuse. And they do even worse if you are not that big as Trump or as Bolsonaro. If you have 5,000 followers, they go there, they delete you, and they don't care. Yeah, they That's it. They platform you from all platforms. Yes. And then you have to go, and uh, not everybody have the, the condition to go to, to a court and ask a judge to get back your account. This is happening a lot in Brazil nowadays. What, what legislation can you do as a congressman? Like, what no, you can can't you do that. This is, this, is, this is against our constitution. If you follow the constitution, you are always going to get back your account, if your account is blocked. As a congressman, we are presenting a law that is, a, that is the, the copy of a law from Poland that uh, says that if the big tech, if they censorship you, with no, if you are not committing any kind of crime, and even like that, they block you, they are going to receive a fee. I don't know, $50,000 per day or something like that. Wow. This is a thing that I say, oh, okay, this is, this is fair. And very probably, our enemies are going to accuse me that, oh, Eduardo, you are, you are doing the same. You are controlling a, a private company. No, no, no. By our constitution, for example, if you commit any kind of crime, you can lose your liberty. You can go to the prison. If you commit other kind of crime, for example, if I say bad words about you, about your mother, I can be convicted and I have to do a, a retrotation. I have to, how, I don't know how to speak in English. I have to, to say that is, it was fake. Apologize. Yeah, apologize. And, publicly. and so what I mean is only a judge, after a trial with both parts accusing and defending, show the proofs, only after that you can receive, you can have less rights. Big techs, they can't tell you that you are not going to have your free, free speech right. They don't have this power. This power is about the judges in Brazil. So uh, it's, it's the same Very thing. To, to be clear, like, can you work in a company as a slaver? No, you can't. This is against the law. But you can go, you can go to the prison and lose your liberty. After you go to a trial with accusation, defense and the judge telling you what is the law you know what i mean Maybe, did i make yeah, myself clear yeah, yeah. first so, first if if there's legal process then yes get off twitter until yes. you go don't go to court you can't just shut someone's voice off yeah, yes uh, this is one of the projects there is another project that uh, i don't uh, other bill where uh, a congressman is saying that uh, if twitter or instagram or facebook if they only publish what you post they are doing their work. They are like doing replications of messages. They, they don't have responsibility uh, about the content. Publish yes. If they, if they are saying that, if they put a tag like, this is maybe a fake news, check here on the site below what is the true news. If they are doing that, if they are blocking you, if they are censorshiping your, your posts, so they became responsible for the posts too. They're publishers now. They're no longer yes. just a platform. Yes, right? yes. So they can receive fees. They can be, you know, blocked, whatever. But we are in that debate. It's very strong nowadays in Brazil, this debate, for sure in US too. Yeah, it's a sensitive subject. Yeah. If I would want to uh, visit now Brazil in this climate now today, for example, as a tourist, would it be possible or would I? Yes, 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 yes it's possible. Is there quarantine? Oh, no, no, no. The <laughs> in, yeah, in the time of like, COVID. That's a yeah, now, nowadays in Brazil, you have... Uh, what, what happened in Brazil is, right in the beginning of the pandemic, the Supreme Court decided that President Bolsonaro 
he doesn't have any kind of control about quarantine or lockdowns, okay? This is up to governors and mayor, mm. period. So what the hood side, what is, what it, which cities or states are going to suffer with lockdowns are the governors and the mayors. And for the president, what, uh, what rests to him is giving money for the states and for the, for the mayors. So billions and billions of dollars from the federal government went to the state government and to some cities. And now what we are looking is the, you are having huge operations of the federal police because it's federal money, because they steal the money. Like you have, uh, you have places where they were paying more than three times the price of some medicines, the, or sometimes they pay millions of dollars to receive uh, machines of brief, and the machine never arrive in the hospital, and this kind of situation. So this is very so sad. Mm. So in most places, there's no quarantine, basically, and no curfew and this type of things. You have, but it depends. It depends the place. Today, especially today, we are facing a strong quarantine in a big part of Brazil. What, what, what are they strategy, strategy? They really don't care about the health of the people. They care about politics and take the power. So many of the governors are going to ask next year to be president. Mm. So they see Jair Bolsonaro as an opposite. So what they do is they block the economy and then when the chaos came, come, when they the blame the president. Mm. If you go outside, I, I received an interview. So they put in, in lockdown, nobody can work, there's no economy, yes, nothing. Yes, yes. But uh, at this point that we are right now, people is getting revolted. They are going to the door of the judges. They are going to the door of the governors because they don't have any kind of option. Like they, or they work, or they are going, I don't know, to start to, to, to steal food. Yeah. You know, right. we, we, we are not a rich country and the biggest, the really biggest part of Brazil, they don't have way to do reserve. They don't have reserve anymore. Like sometimes they, they, we say in Brazil, they sell the lunch to have something to eat in mm -hmm. the dinner. So things are getting more and more people on the streets against the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is the next, but uh, I pray for God to our governors to they have the minimum of honesty to care about the people and let them work. Yeah. You can use protocols. Yeah. You can use, I don't know, whatever you think that is necessary. Masks, alcohol, but lockdowns, you don't have space for lockdowns anymore in Brazil. You can protect the elderly, the sensitive people, that type of thing, right? Yes, and they say, uh, and, and usually those that uh, say that, oh, you have to use masks, you have to do that. And you're going to see, for example, the governor of Sao Paulo, his son was in a party. Man, come on. Are you talking for real that we are under a war against a virus? Or you are talking that only publicly? And in a private life, you let your son go to parties? Man, I mean, who, honestly, let's go be honest. Who arrive at home with masks and hug your wife and hug your son? No one. <laughs> no one. And I do prefer that I take... Covid before my grandparents because the risk for my grandparents is really is really higher than mine. So I don't know. I, I'm a favor that uh, you choose the life that you want. It's good. Yeah. That's how it should be. Let's uh, wrap it up. Um, <laughs> we uh, really really appreciate uh, appreciate your time. And um, thank I know, you. I know thank you for having easy. us. Yeah. No, my just, pleasure. I have one last question. Your father kind of said, we're going to have an embassy here soon. Yes. It's going to happen? <laughs> yes. What he, he don't determinate is the date. But he's going to do that. Trust me, he's going to do that. So in the maximum, the end of the next year is the end of his term. So it's the final, it's the final, final date mm -hmm. to do that. But I'm really confident that really before that he's going to do uh, this transfer. I don't talk by the Brazilian government. I don't talk by my father. This is Eduardo Bolsonaro talking. But uh, I think it's, it's going to be soon. I, I, I don't think it's going to be, to be that long. Trust how, me. How it will you... be a re really big party because you don't have idea. I don't know if you have idea the evangelicals how they support the Jewish. 
yeah. and how they admire Israel and your society. It's a very important thing. I, I know a lot of money comes to Israel, a lot of support, a lot of just good press and good, good um, loving care for the Jewish people comes from Brazil, from America, yeah. from all these communities. It's really, we appreciate it. We, yeah. we definitely recognize it and we see it. We feel it, yeah. There is a very funny thing. If you go to YouTube again and you see, tap there, Jair Bolsonaro arriving airport in Brazil, 2017, 2018. And you are going to see like a crowd waiting for Jair Bolsonaro. And then you have the Brazilian flag and sometimes the Israeli flag. Mm -hmm. ah. And they go, why are you from Israel? No, I'm Brazilian, but I like Israel. I do trust wow. in the Bible and everything. Man, this You're is so incredible. Cool. Like, really? Here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you, how Israel, do you see the future? Why, why not? I don't know. Maybe US, Argentina, I don't know. France, Argentina. Germany, Portugal. No, Argentina. No, Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> that one hurt a little bit. <laughs> I'm only half Brazilian, but uh, it's a strong half. <laughs> Do you know Danny Dayan? Danny Dayan, the, the ambassador? He born, he is originally from Argentina. Oh, wow. Maybe that's that. why Juma Rousseff denied his credentials. It could be. It could be. <laughs> How do you see the future of our, of our relationship between the two countries? Yeah, I think it's going to be better and better day after day. Uh, for example, in my comment, you have some agreements that Jair Bolsonaro signed with Benjamin Netanyahu in 2019 that have to go through the Congress. Uh, you have at least two or three agreements, and I really think that we are going to approve that because in the Foreign Affairs and National Defense Committee that uh, I still preside, you have a majority pro-Israel. You have like four, maybe five of 30 that are against Israel, but uh, no. Everybody is going, to, is going to approve that. That's good to hear. And uh, this agreement talks about defense and technology exchange. So the future is more exchange. More Brazilian scientists come to here. Easier to the tourists from Israel get into Brazil. So, you know, this connective is going to be better and better. One learning with each other. This is the future. You have any questions for us on uh, <laughs> Judaism, Israel, <laughs> life? <laughs> Why you use oh, these? Oh, these. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, when anybody sees, these are called tzitzit. 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 In tzitzit. the Torah, it says, it says that whenever you wear a four-cornered garment, right, uh -huh. and you have to put on these strings. Basically, here with the four corners and all of the knots that you have here and the four strings that come down to eight, it adds up to 613. 613. 613. 613 That's is the, the amount of all the mitzvot of the, the Torah, amount, all the, the commandments. commandments that we have in the Torah that the Jews have to do, right? So whenever we see it, Supposed we remember remind. the whole entire Torah. And it's a beautiful commandment because technically it's optional. Mm -hmm. If you wear a four-cornered garment, you have to put it on. Mm -hmm. If you don't wear a four-cornered garment, you don't have to put it on. But we all wear it. All the religious Jews wear it. And we take it, we don't want it to be optional. We want to always remember that mm -hmm. we have it. And there's a story even in the, in the, in the Talmud, in the, the, the Codex of Jewish Law, of a man that uh, he was on social media, he was, <laughs> he was getting a little bit distracted, and he decided to go to... Uh, 2,000 years ago. <laughs> yeah, he decided to go to this house where there's a lot of women there. And there's a little bit of business that goes on there. And as he's coming and he meets the woman that he's about to spend some time with, he comes to take his clothing off and he gets a slap in the face. And he stopped and he left and he didn't, he wasn't with her. So this is Supposed a constant remind reminder. <laughs> to behave, <laughs> to be good. Be good boys. <laughs> so both of our wives are in the north and we came here to Jerusalem to the big city, but uh, we're going to stay connected and we're not going to get uh, distracted. So that's one of the, one of the ideas. Uh -huh. yeah, Some people wear a ring, we wear this. <laughs> <laughs> Useful. Yeah, yeah there's, uh, there's a lot of depth. There's a lot uh, to everything. There's a lot of depth. So. Mm -hmm. But if I could say something, I was yeah. taking notes here things about Israel. So in 2016, I came here my first visit. 2018, uh, in December, we inaugurated uh, a direct flight from Sao Paulo to Tel Aviv. 2019, January. Before that, there wasn't any, any direct flight? No. Wow. No. And now it's even a shorter flight because with Sudan, mm. now that they are in the Abraham Accords, now you can fly to Tel Aviv through Sudan. And uh, 
the flight uh, got uh, shorter, like one or two hours. Wow. Oh, that's a big difference. Yeah, because otherwise it was necessary to like almost a circle. North Africa. <laughs> North Africa. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in 2019, January 1st of 2019, it was the first time that we that we had uh, a prime minister from Israel in Brazil. It was Benjamin Netanyahu for the inauguration of my father, uh -huh. and we are very proud about that. And uh, you went to Copacabana as well. Yes, <laughs> playing football on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> very bad soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're working on it. We're working. Maybe that's one thing in the future. We can get uh, Ronaldinho or someone yeah, to come over and coach us a little bit. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, also during the World Cup, I was wearing the Israeli sure. Israeli soccer T-shirt, and uh, it was no, it wasn't. It was in the Olympic Games, I guess. I was in Copacabana wearing the Israeli T-shirt, and then uh, an Israeli group stopped me on the street and uh, started just talking Hebrew with me. I said, "No, I'm Brazilian." You're Brazilian, you're wearing an Israeli t-shirt. <laughs> Why? Because I like Israel. Why you are not wearing an Israeli t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> but then we had in 2019, January, a very, very bad thing that it was, we say, Brumadinho tragedy. It was a mine that uh, the wall came down, so you had tons and tons of, uh, you know, mug, uh, mud, mud, uh, yeah, mud, uh, and things, iron, everything, it, it killed hundreds of people in Brazil. And uh, we asked the Israel for help, and you sent a little bit more than 100 soldiers from IDF to Brazil to help in the rescue and to find the bodies. And it was very nice. After that, that yeah, in my committee, we approved uh, a paper uh, saying thank you for the IDF and for the Israeli government at that time to approve it. It's a paper, it's a motion. It was a, a hard working against those five or six left-wing guys that do not support Israel. And then... Wait, to receive help or to say thank you? To say thank you. They don't want to say thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they were, because in the beginning it was written for the government of Israel. And they said, no, this is with politician propose because you like Benjamin Netanyahu. And I said, okay, we can change it for the state of Israel. If you prefer, no, this is very bad too, because Israel, they do not respect the human rights, and blah, 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 you know. They always find a, a way to criticize, not criticize, to attack. They are dirty. Even when you help them. You have some, uh, some countries, even if you help these countries, they are going to criticize you. I don't know if you know what I mean. But uh, anyway, let's go. Uh, and in the end of, uh, then in March, you had the, the visit of Jair Bolsonaro here in Israel. I got to meet him. Yeah, huh? I, got, I got to meet him. It was amazing. We were here in this room. No, it was yeah. very nice. Like uh, with Benjamin Netanyahu receiving my father in the airport, it was just just crazy, crazy, crazy. Really nice, really nice. And we signed agreements in the areas of uh, defense, fight against organized crime, science, air service, technology, and IMOU memorandum of understanding about cybersecurity. So these are the some of these agreements are in my table. And the next president of my committee, he's going to speed it up. 2019, the December, every, every year, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee decided a country to visit. This is very common. So what I decided, come to Israel and UAE. I thought we are going to know a Jewish majority society and an Arab majority society with the Muslims. And then know what? Do you remember that five or six, guy, six guys that I told you that don't like Israel? Mm -hmm. They start also to criticize UAE. Oh, wow. <laughs> man, this is incredible. Like, everything. You it, can't win. Man, yeah. They don't like anyone. <laughs> That's right. This medicine is good. They're going to say, no, this medicine is not working. We don't need that. Uh, man, it's, it's just it's a sickness. It's, it's sick. Yeah. It's crazy. But it's whatever. It's ingratitude. Ingratitude. Yes. Yeah. The, one of the most important things in, in Judaism, in the whole entire Bible, is, is gratitude. gratitude. Saying thank you. Realizing that it's not all me. Right? Someone, someone else might be able to help me. And I just have to say thank you. Yes. Can't it's the minimum, it I guess. We need friends. We need God. Cannot do everything alone. Yes. But do you see how unhappy life these kind of people have? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... Uh, after that, in the December, we, so we came here to Israel with uh, four colleagues from my committee. And this is very nice because when they know, when they see what I saw in 2016, they, got, they get so much uh, impressed. When they come back home, 
now I have four more soldiers to fight for Israel with me. This is incredible. They come back like loving Israel. Inspired. Because if you know, if you suffer with fake news here, imagine what they talk about you on the other side of the ocean. Man, it's, it's incredible. How much you help Palestine. You gave a territory. What they do? They send the missiles from that territory against you. You fight back against terrorists. You develop technology to do not kill innocent kids because the son of a bitch, sorry about the term, but the son of a bitch, they send <laughs> missiles from <laughs> schools because they know that when you send back a missile to respond to this attack, it follows, you know, the... Trajectory. Yeah, yeah. the thermal the thermo thing in the air. Man, this is crazy. Like, you, you are on. heroes. And they do not recognize that because you have so much fake news media around the world against you. And they attack the only one democracy in the region that respect the women 100% and they live like whatever they want. This is, this is insane. And more insane that to have people from Israel that is against Israel. Man, this is crazy. We still don't understand Unfortunately, it. This is suicide. This is suicide. No, that's okay. We're working hard on this to make peace this in is, ourselves. This is, this is up, the main this is thing. This is up to you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for I have my own war in my, in my country. <laughs> and then 2019, uh, okay. We, uh, and after I came to Israel and we, I went to Oman, Bahrain, Kuwait, and then came back to Israel. And at that time, it wasn't necessary to go to Turkey and go back to Israel mm -hmm. for a couple of hours to be in the inauguration of our... Uh, export agency, which we in Brazil we call Apex, is the agency for uh, exportations that they, they opened in Jerusalem, their yes, office. Yeah. It was a first step for the embassy changing hmm. to Jerusalem. And then in February of 2020, right before the pandemic, we had a very nice, uh, nice dinner in Mar-a-Lago with Trump, Jared Kushner, and Ivanka. And I had the time. I don't know why, but sometimes Trump, you can go to the YouTube again <laughs> and see that he like uh, talking good words about me in the White House during the, the press conference. And then at here in Mar-a-Lago, he said that, oh, no, Eduardo, he, he's a good guy. I thought, talking to my father. And I told him, no, good guy is Jared Kushner and Ivanka. And I really admire them about what they are doing in Middle East. And I would love that when we have the change of the embassy to Jerusalem, to invite them. To, to be here with us because uh, Jared, he really, uh, before Jared, you can say that you have to choose one side. Or you are pro-Israel or you are against Israel and pro-other countries, whatever. But then they, ha they, they have this approach, simultaneous approach with Jewish, Muslims, Arabs, and everybody. And they prove that you can, you can do policies that are good for everybody. Man, this is incredible. I really, I really admire Jared Kushner. And then in September, uh, after, in September, we signed for the first time an agreement between the Foreign Affairs Committee of Brazil and the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Knesset. Hmm. This agreement that we signed, this is innovation, and the main thing, it, it, it has a new tool now that we can consult each other. So sometimes we debate the Middle East in the Foreign Affairs Committee in Brazil, but with the information of the mainstream media. Hmm. Now, no, now I can ask for official information from the Knesset. So it brings more light to the debates. And in the Congress, we produce official documents. So this is steps forward for the, bring the truth to Brazil and don't be a hostage of the fake news media. And, uh, and it was the first time that we signed this kind of document, at least in the Brazilian, in the Brazilian Congress. In October of 2020, I made a barbecue at my house oh. with the president of Brazil, with the chancellor of Brazil, and with the ambassadors of UAE, Bahrain, Israel, and US. It was our kind of uh, Abraham Accords <laughs> barbecue version in Brazil. Good meat? <laughs> good meat. And it was, yeah, and I cooked that. Uh. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> And uh, it was very nice because uh, after that, uh, I saw the Bahrain ambassador in the Israeli embassy in Brazil. And they together, Yossi Shelley, who is more than an ambassador, he is really a friend of Brazil. He's almost Brazilian. Yossi Shelley, the Israeli ambassador in Brazil, he started a, a business club with the Bahrain ambassadors. 
and things start to, to be like the atmosphere is other. The atmosphere is really is really great. And after this, whatever I have here, and now we are here looking forward for some medicine to fight back against this this virus <laughs> and vaccine and everything. By the way, in Brazil, we are also developing our, our own vaccines. And we think in the end of the year, we are going to have it. We have uh, three projects. You have one that is, is vaccine is good, not only for the COVID, it's good for influenza too. Mm -hmm. You have other vaccine that goes to your body and it's not necessary your, your body produce the antibodies of the COVID. This vaccine goes directly to your immunization system, so it's fast to you get protected. And the other one, I forgot about the benefit, but uh, each one of the three has its own benefits. And I think in, until the end of the year, we are going to have good news to announce. And who are you, who you going to vaccinate, who you want to, uh, to get? In Brazil, to get? In Brazil nowadays, uh, you have a pri we are a big country, so you have uh, priorities. Mm. So now at this first phase, we are vaccinating the doctors, the nurses, and the people who has more than 65 years old. Mm. This is the first group. And we have uh, about four or 5% of the country already received the shots. And we are working with a vaccine that came from China called CoronaVac who the governor of Sao Paulo brought to Brazil. Its efficacy is 50%. And we are working with the vaccine from Oxford, is AstraZeneca, that they are producing in India and sending to Brazil. It has 78% of, uh, of success. And now, today, I just read that uh, our sanitary and health agency approved the vaccine from Pfizer. So I think soon we are going to have a Pfizer in Brazil too. Great. So people can choose. Perfect. It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. All right. Great. Maybe successful. A lot of success. And all your missions. For us. Here for in us. Brazil. You have a message for for any of the Brazilians, Israelis, Brazilian Israelis, Israeli Brazilians, Jews, Christians, whoever they might be. What's your message <laughs> about the importance of the peace and the cooperation between the two nations? Uh huh. No, like, uh, first you have to go to Brazil to know our beautiful country. And we are big. You're going to need at least a couple of months to know a little bit yeah. better than that. But uh, our countries are really connected. Since the, the beginning of this new chapter of Israel, I mean, since 1947, which was Valdaranhas, and nowadays, not only with Jair Bolsonaro or Benjamin Netanyahu, I think we are much more than that. We are... are like the modern fighters for the freedom, for the liberty. And uh, I think we, our main tool to work this war, it's not, it's not about weapons or guns, it's about the truth. So that's why the big techs are trying to silence us, because they are desesperated. If they are desesperated and showing everybody who they are, it's because very probably we are winning this war. Mm -hmm. So do not lose your hope. Keep going. Talking with your family. If you have a social media, go to the social media. If they block you, it doesn't matter. You keep going to the bakery, going to the church, going to the soccer, playing with your friends. Like, uh, you have only two ways to live your life. If you follow this kind of dictatorship or if you fight back against them, there is no other option. And I choose to fight back against them and fight back for the liberty and for the right for everyone. Live your life on the way that you think is the best for you. I think that this is the message. Yeah, nice. Don't cry, Bolsonaro. don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. Be happy. <laughs> Do you believe in a politician? I'm kidding. <laughs> you, yes, you speak genuinely. That's the thing, you speak what you think, and your father does the same, so it's different than, you're not really a politician, you're a person that <laughs> yeah. works in politics. Yeah. You're a real person. <laughs> Good, man, I, I like this definition. You're I a real like person, definition. and people can see it and hear it. <laughs> My blood is as head as everybody blood. Exactly. One day I'll not yeah. get reelected, I'll come back to the federal police, or I don't know, whatever. Mm. I, I feel also like, the, the other side always tries to divide us. It's so the division the, with the communists yes. and all this stuff. They try to divide the people, and now you see it also in the news. It's trying to divide people and separate people. And 
really, like you were saying also here in Israel, like unity is so important, right? We all mm -hmm. can agree. And like the Torah, the main thing of the Torah, like the Rabbi Hillel, one of the main rabbis, was saying like the, literally the main thing of the Torah, what the Torah is coming to say is to love your fellow as yourself. That's the main thing. Yes. And if we yes. can just love each other and respect each other. Yes. I think, yeah, right. I don't know if you are left wing, right wings, if you vote, whatever. We vote for him. Yeah. yeah. That's it. We are here. Sometimes people say that uh, usually in the Congress you have all kind of the people. And we keep, we keep the peace there, you know, during the debates, during the votation. So why not the society? I tell people sometimes, like, when you're going to play a, a, a soccer game, you don't choose your, the members of your team asking them if they are right wing or left wing. <laughs> So yeah. keep your life. When I go surf, I, I, I do not enter in the water and start to ask, oh, if you're left wing, go there, go there. Yeah. Here, only conservatives. No, man, we don't care about it. This is about politics, all right? Yeah. But uh, because our society is really getting shared, like divided. Yeah. It's their strategy. It's their strategy. In Brazil, if you go back 10 or 15 years, you don't have uh, even words like homophobic. Yeah. You know, everything of that is, is created to, to divide the people with political purpose. They say that you are the racist, the nazist, and everything, and then they say, no, I will preserve and I will protect you. Man, then they are going to ask for your vote. Everything is about the power. Man, it's, it's dumb. <laughs> That's why the aliens don't, do not arrive here. <laughs> they only cross with the spaceships. <laughs> yeah. They look, what? Oh, thank you. So and, and our next podcast with Eduardo Bolsonaro will go into aliens and what the Brazilians know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Congressman. I say thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank thank you. Uh, Hashid. 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 Hasid. Hasid. Two Hasids. Thank you, Hasids. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Welcome to the club.